Hey, this is Chris. want to talk to you today a little bit about setting up printers. <clears throat> and one little trick I've learned that might save you some headache on down the road. Um, you know, generally speaking, setting up, and I'm really talking about wireless printers because wired printers are pretty much foolproof. And there's really no other things that you need to think about while you're setting those up because generally speaking, you know, the, a wired printer is just used on one computer and uh, is not generally moved from computer to computer and uh, that's the only computer that you can use to print on that printer so cuts down on the variables quite a bit but in regards to a wireless printer usually setting up a wireless printer is pretty easy you know you get the printer and uh, you know a couple things one of, maybe one of three things is going to happen you're going to plug it in and Windows is going to find it and install it all by itself by searching Windows update if that doesn't work then I've seen some printers lately have started giving web addresses to the setup software so you just type it in in your browser and it takes care of everything for you and the third way of course is most printers still come with some kind of installation disk and so you put that into your DVD ROM drive and you follow the directions and by the time you're done it's done everything's ready to rock and roll uh, usually the only even somewhat difficult part of setting up a wireless printer is to get it connected to your wireless router so that the printer can communicate through all the devices that you want to print from through the router. So if you're not hooked up to the router, your wireless printer is not going to work. That's just kind of the way it is. <clears throat> so generally speaking, what the installation software will do, it will automate that as much as possible. But at some point, it's generally going to ask you to press the WPS button uh, you know, after you turn the printer on, turn, print, I mean, press the WPS button on your router, and then that is going to take care of getting your um, printer and router communicating with one another. And for a lot of applications, that's just fine. Um, your typical home doesn't have too many devices hooked to it, generally speaking. And what the, what the router is doing is just simply using the DHCP protocol, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And it automatically, uh, no matter, and it's not just printers, any device that's seeking to connect to the router, it will automatically negotiate all the parameters that the router needs and that the device needs so they, they can communicate with one another. And so that takes a, a lot of the guesswork out of it. Now the only, the only difficulty you're going to run into when you do that method and I've run into it twice in the last couple weeks and so this is why I'm sharing this trick with you is if you have your printer set up and it's been assigned a specific address by the router as the name implies, dynamic host configuration protocol, there's nothing that says that if either the router or the printer is shut off for any reason, that the next time they hook up, that it will receive the same address information, it's called an IP address, that it will receive the, the same conf configuration pro I mean the same configuration information and therefore IP address that it got the last time. So you have to think about that because if your router or your printer gets shut off, and I say probably mostly the router, uh, I think if the printer gets shut off, the, the IP tables are saved in the router and they'll, it'll pretty much get the same IP address the next time. But if the router shut off, or especially if the router is reset, you know, if you call the if you're not getting internet service for whatever reason and you and you call like CenturyLink or Time Warner Cable, the first thing they're going to say is, well, unplug the router for 30 seconds and plug it back in and see what happens. And if that doesn't help, then they're going to tell you to reset your DS, your, uh, well, they'll still tell you to reset your DSL modem, but usually those have the routers built in. And that will reset everything on the router back to its default setting. And it will probably mean that it will assign a different IP address to your router the next time those two try to communicate. Now, it, they will hook up, but they may not hook up at the same address. And if they don't hook up at the same address, then Windows, the Windows print spooler and printer driver, 
you're going to say, here Windows, I want to print this document, and Windows is going to say, okay, let me take care of that, and it's going to be looking for the printer, and it's not going to be able to find it, because Windows is not smart like that. It's not going to just look for an available printer and start printing. It has to have, it has to have that IP address in order to get what's in the print spooler to the buffer on that printer. That there, If it doesn't have that address, it's not going to work. And so the way to get around that is, and to, and to keep that from ever happening, uh, the trick is to go onto your printer and set a, what's called a static IP address. And so instead of the, configure, the IP configuration information being stored on the router, now the IP configuration information is stored on the printer. And so as long as you start out with a valid IP address, uh, something in the range of addresses that your router can, is configured to handle. Actually, a router can can uh, handle just about any address you want to put in there, as long as it's in the format of three three numeric values dot three numeric values dot three numeric values dot three numeric values. So your typical router is a home address or the or the gateway address or the you know whatever you want to call it. It generally starts something like this, 192.168.0. And then the last three numbers are the actual address within that range that count for anything. So as long as you have those first three sections of your IP address right, you can put any number in uh, for an address. So any number between 1 and 255. So if your router is 192.168.0.1, then you can use any number except for one in that last section so you want to set your uh, router address I mean not your router address your printer address you just choose one other number so it could be 192.168.0.100 or 102 or 50 or 254 whatever as long as it's between 1 and 255 and not including one because that's where your router is and it's important to know too that you can't have two devices on your network with the same exact IP address, otherwise the router doesn't know what to do with it and it starts complaining about it through Windows. <coughs> so in order to set that static IP address, that's a little bit beyond, uh, yeah, it's a little bit beyond what, you know, I can really explain and, and plus all printers tend to be different and they use different ways uh, to set up standard uh, the, the static IP addresses. And so what you want to do, you just want to take a good look at your printer, and you want to first make a note of the make, and uh, like HP or Canon or whoever else, and then make a note of the model number. Like I have a little printer inside, so it's HP 1020. You enter that into your Google search box, and then follow that, follow those like HP 10220, and with, with the following phrase, set IP address. And generally speaking, you will find at least two or three videos that will show you exactly how to set that static IP address. And then once you do that, uh, the router will, you, uh, you have to go back into Windows and run through the configuration, not the whole configuration for the printer, but go into devices and printers and make sure that that printer can see, you know, read, uh, there, you know, there's always, there's a button in there or something to refresh the, uh, the connection setting. Just do that, and uh, usually the usually the printer has some kind of indication. A flashing light turns solid, or you know, a, a red light turns green, or you know, something like that that will let you know that it's hooked up. And then you can also go into the configuration settings of the of the printer. Usually, there's a little screen on the front if it's if it's been made in the last few years. You can go in there to networks or network settings, or you can print a self-diagnostic page, and it will tell you if it's hooked up. You know, if all the network spaces are filled in, then you're hooked up and you're good to go and you're ready to print. And so, <clears throat> but the and of course the advantage of setting an IP, a static IP address is no matter what happens to your router, it doesn't matter what happens to your router. Uh, you, the Windows, the next time everything gets turned back on, the router will be able to find the printer. Your computer will be hooked back up to the router, and the router will provide the correct address information to your Windows computer. And there you go. You'll, you'll be up and printing in no time. So <clears throat> I think I pretty much started doing them all that way. Um, 
just because it gives me peace of mind. That way, if somebody calls and says my printer's not working, I know I'm not going to have, a, have to waste a trip uh, over to their house to you know make sure the IP configuration is correct because I already know it's correct and so I don't have to worry about that. So that's one less step on the troubleshooting chain that I have to go through to figure out what's going on. So, uh, And of course it helps the people who I've done it for because they generally don't have to call because it's you know, wireless printing is really pretty much, if you set a, stand, a static IP address, it, you can't mess it up unless you go in and on purpose mess it up by typing something in a command prompt that, that uh, you know, doesn't make any sense and somehow those settings get accepted. So anyway, like I said, Google is your friend. If you want to st set a static IP address, then uh, Google the make and model number of your printer, followed that by the phrase set static IP address. Uh, if you still feel that's a, a little bit above your head and you would like to take advantage of having a st static IP address, then, of course, you can always give me a call, 919-518-6649 at Lee Acres Computers. Be happy to stop by. I mean, if that's all you need, it's 25 bucks. So, you know, not much money for some peace of mind, right? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you do or did. And we will see you all. Oh, leave questions or comments in the question comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you on the next one.